Hi, welcome to my session, Tools for Success to Support All Students in the Virtual World Language Classroom. My name is Berta Delgadillo, and I've been a Spanish teacher for the last seven years. The last five years I taught middle school, but in 2013, when I began my teaching career, I taught middle school for two years, and I have to say I enjoyed it, but my favorite age group are definitely the high schoolers. I have several passions as a teacher, and some of those include acquisition-driven instruction, I love attending professional learning, and I love sharing with teachers anything that I've learned that I've used in the classroom that's been a success. I'm also passionate about leading my students to take ownership of their proficiency journey because in my school, because we are a CTAE school, a lot of our students are only required to take one year of the language. So I might only have my students for Spanish two. I might have some of them for Spanish two and Spanish three. But what gets really rewarding that I've seen across the years because my students are able to understand how to lead their own language journey is when they come back two or three years after they graduated and they are a lot more fluent in the language because they have decided to engage with the community and they have decided to own that journey. So I really enjoy that and that's why I'm a huge advocate of talking to our students about how to move across the proficiency ratings. My other passion are heritage speakers. Being that I was a heritage speaker student in middle school and in high school here in the United States, I had great experiences with teachers and in my language classes, not so great ones. So I really want like to help teachers understand our heritage speakers. And I really enjoy teaching those students. So that's another passion of mine. I'm also a member of SCOLT, and today I want to take the opportunity to invite you to join us to, during SCOLT 2021 Language Through an Unfiltered Lens Conference on March 18th through 20th in Atlanta, Georgia. So what are our goals today in this session? Well, first, we're going to explore ideas to create and sustain strong relationships with students during the online learning experience. But I wanna pause right there and I wanna tell you that I selected everything that I'm gonna share with you today with a purpose. And I want this to be a session to enrich the way that you teach online already, but I also wanna wanted to select the tools for success for the students that are also transferable when we go back to teach on site. So everything that I'm gonna share with you has so much power. It's very simple. They're very, very simple concepts, and very simple ideas and strategies, but they have so much power because you can use them in the online learning environment. And I learned many of these because of online learning. But a lot of it, we can go back and use it in our classroom and it's only gonna make our teaching better. So that's very exciting. Um, I'm also, today we're going to examine a variety of online tools for successful online learning that address different stages of a lesson. So we're gonna look at different stages of a lesson and I'm going to share with you my top tools, like my most recommended tools. Uh, and then finally, we're going to review and select strategies to motivate students to succeed. So the first thing I wanna focus on today is relationships. Sometimes every teacher knows that relationships are so important. Sometimes it starts to begin to sound a little bit cliche. And I wanna share this quote with you. I love sharing quotes because they speak to my practice and I really like to think about powerful words. So I really wanna share this one. It says, kids who are loved at school come to school to learn and kids who are, who are not loved come to school to be loved. So sometimes we might have some students and we wonder why they are not connecting with us, why they're always so defiant. It's probably because they might not have the most supported system at home. But 
that's not always the case, but it's good to keep that in our mind. So why do I say that? Well, that is because I want this to lead us to talk about why relationships. Why should we focus on relationships? Well, first of all, we want to show our students how much we genuinely care. When the students know that you care, they're willing to do a lot of things for you. For example, I was working on a huge project that required a lot of research in the last couple of weeks. And I was already out of school. We have been out of school for, as of now, going on the fourth week. So I asked my students for some help. I needed uh, some help from them. And I reached out to them through um, social media, through my teacher's social media account. And every time I asked for something, they did it, even if it would require for them to do work. And that's because they know that I care and I just, I, they know that I love them and I feel so loved by them. Another reason why we want to focus on relationships is because no learning can happen if we cannot meet the Maslow's needs. I know we have heard it many times, Maslow before Bloom, Maslow before Bloom. And it is so true. Why is that important? We have to realize through relationships, it's the way we can find out what from Maslow is missing in a student's environment, whether it's at home, whether it's at school. If we don't have relationships with students, we don't have a vision and we can't help those students. So I have some strategies to help us help help us meet those students, meet the needs of the students so that we can lead them to some bloom work, to some actual learning. Some things we can do to build strong relationships with our students. Here are some ideas that I've used that were successful during online learning. Um, conduct some surveys with our students. I know that as teachers, every year at the beginning of the year, we conduct surveys, whether it's on paper or whether it's through Google Forms. I like to use Google Forms and um, simply conduct some surveys to get some key information from my students. My student survey, which I'm sharing with you right here and in this presentation, if you click on this link, it will open the survey for you. It's extensive and it asks a lot of questions. So. I actually give my students a grade to com for completing this because I, that is how important it is to me. So I asked them obviously for their parents' uh, email, for their parents' phone number. I asked them if they have siblings. I asked them if they have after school athletics, if they have a job after school, what do they like to do, what's their favorite food, their favorite candy. Ooh, they like, I, li I have questions that are like, I like it when teachers blank. I don't like it when teachers blank. Uh, so one thing I would like Ms. Delgadillo to know about me is blank. So that way I give them the opportunity to those students who are willing to open up to say something to me about themselves. Uh, for example, last semester before COVID, I discovered that I had a class with a lot of introverts because a lot of the students responded that they were shy. And that was going to be very interesting. And it was a very interesting class. I had a lot of fun with them. Uh, also, uh, another thing that helped me this semester, especially after with the school closures, was to conduct a parent survey after the first week. So when we went, when we switched to online learning, I conducted a parent survey with just a few questions. And you can see a screenshot of two of those questions. I wanted to know how could I better help their child, and I wanted to know what was the situation if the parent was willing to disclose it. So I created a couple of possible scenarios, um, and that way I knew what to expect realistically from each of my students. Uh, and usually my parents, in the very last question where it says, please feel free to use this space to let me know how I can better support your child's remote learning experience, 
or you may choose to ask a question. Uh, thank you for taking the time to complete the survey. Uh, a lot of the parents responded and said, please let me know if my child um, falls off the schedule. Uh, that's what they wanted to, to let me know. Uh, so through surveys, A, I can collect key information that lets me know how to structure my class, whether it's virtually or at school. And it also lets me know where do my parents stand in terms of online learning? What kind of technology do my students have? That's also in the student survey. I asked them how many siblings they have. So how does that play into online learning? Well, I remember this year I had a student who um, wasn't turning in their work and he is normally a really good student. So I remember that he had siblings. So I reached out to him and I said, uh, you know, I noticed you haven't been turning in your work. I know that you've been connecting, but not everything is done. Could you tell me why um, you haven't been able to complete your work? It's not a big deal. I can give you an extension. And he told me, he said, oh, Ms. Delgadillo, I have a sibling who is called in college and I share a computer with her and I have two other little sisters and they go to elementary school and we are all sharing one computer in my house. So this type of information lets us know that there is a stressor. And this student's stressor was the fact that he didn't have access to technology the way he wanted to have access to technology. So thankfully through my school, we were able to work together and uh, deliver an, um, a computer so that he could do his work and he could have another computer to complete his assignments. That's why the power of building relationships is so important, especially for online learning. Here's another beautiful idea for my friend, uh, Claudia Elliott. And you can click on the source to actually view the clip, the tweet. This is taken from Twitter. A lot of people were wondering how to take attendance during online learning. So I really love this idea. And this is the best idea that I've seen. Uh, some people created forms and that is, those are great ideas. And this was done through, um, through a post on, I guess, on Canvas, because she uses Canvas. But you could do it if you use Google Classroom, you could create a post on Google Classroom, or you could create a Google form that they have to turn in every day, whatever works best for your scenario. But the point is that to know that the student was there, um, uh, you would ask a question. And you could ask any type of question that has nothing to do with, oh, what is your name? um or what time is it right now or things of that nature so what she asked is why are you thankful today and students were able to respond in english or in spanish it was their choice but that way claudia was able to see how their students were feeling through the responses and that is also very powerful especially during online learning, when we don't have that opportunity to be right in front of the student and you know high five them or have all this interaction with them, um, and we can't read their body language and we don't know what they're feeling and we do not know what's going on at home. So this is an amazing idea to take attendance. You can do emotional check-ins. And I think this idea was originally from Samara Spielberg as Claudia mentions in this um, tweet. Um, but I adopted this idea as well, and it was very powerful. It made me feel con a lot more connected to my students. So closing the aspect of school of relationships, I want to talk uh, to just leave you with this quote, and you can watch the video of your own. If you haven't seen this video, Every Kid Needs a Champion by Rita Pearson, I totally want to invite you to go watch it. You will enjoy every moment of it. And she says it very simply, kids don't learn from people they don't like. So they like us more when they know we care. And I know you care. The second aspect of online learning that I want to highlight 
upon today is optimizing the way we deliver the content. And this quote, my dear friend, is for you to think about you and for me to think about me. Every decision we make absorbs cognitive energy and drains your battery little by little. The more stressful the decision, the more it drains capacity. This is from a book called Fully Charged, which is an amazing book and it talks all about Maslow before Bloom. I'm a big fan of that. <laughs> so, um, the reason why I bring this quote up right now is because when we went into the whole, we're going to do on school online, I know that I love technology and, I, and you know, part of it, I was not happy about it, but I felt comfortable with my skill level. And I said, okay, whatever, I don't know, I can learn, but I felt pretty confident to, to transition to online as a teacher. Um, however, weeks into it and I started getting emails from everywhere. That's when it started getting a little bit more heavy. Uh, I wanted, I felt like I wasn't catching up enough with the newest thing. And let me tell you something, my friend, you do not have to do that. You do not have to do something new every day. You don't, although, you know, I commend you for learning and sure, go learn. I, I am a lifelong learner when it comes to teaching, but some, there comes a point where you can figure out what works for you and your students and your situation and you can move on and it's going to be fine. So that's what we're going to address next. So very quickly. These are some things that we have to think about when we're teaching, right? Just regular teaching, recording lessons or delivering lessons, input time, assessment, feedback, reflection. How are we going to do all of that during teaching online? Hmm. It can be done. So at the beginning of online learning, I totally highlighted all of these possible ways to reach my students. Recording lessons, this is what I have available to provide input, this is what I can do to uh, allow my students to process, uh, processing and assessment tools, these are the ones that I can use, and these are the ones that I'm familiar with. And then for the closing and reflection, this is what we can do, and the feedback. Well, think about it. How many, I mean, just looking at this list, even though I love all of these resources and I've taken the time to learn about each one of them, if you don't know all of these resources, this is going to be a big overwhelm. So how do you think our students feel when they see a post with 15 links? Very over overwhelmed, and we must be aware of that. Something that we discovered during online learning is that less is more. So today I wanna to invite you to check out some of my favorite tools for learning that not only am I going to continue to use if I have to teach online next semester, but I'm also gonna use them in the classroom because they are that powerful. So the first tool that I want to share with you that I learned how to use, and I'm sure many of you did, is Loom. If you wanna check out Loom, and the reason why I recommend Loom is because Loom is gonna be free forever for educators. You can click on the presentation and it will take you to the link that says free for educators. You must sign up to that link so that you can get free access and you need your school email to use it. Here's a picture of my friend, Norma Jones, my beautiful friend, Norma, uh, where she was doing a lesson that she adapted from Senora Chase's blog that you can click over here where she explains to you how you can use Loom in the world language classroom. And I know that I use uh, Loom and I love it because it's so easy to use. I'm actually recording this presentation right now with Loom. I love how clean it is. I love how easy it is to um, com complete tasks with it. And I love how I can trim my videos. Um, what can you do with Loom in the classroom and beyond the classroom when you're back in the building? Well, obviously for online learning, we can record asynchronous lessons, but for online and back in school, we can really use Loom for other things. We can use Loom to record independent 
independent learning task. You know that student that sometimes finishes class uh, or the assignment before everybody else? We can pre-record something for them to do that's meaningful to that particular student to strengthen that relationship. We can use Loom to provide feedback on uh, our students' uh, work. We can use it to send a personalized message to our students and to our parents. That builds up relationships. And the parent relationships are so important to be established at the beginning of the year, as we know. And then we can use it to communicate announcements in a very easy way. If we're not into doing newsletters and typing newsletters every quarter, we can just create a video for our parents to let them know what's going on in our class with Loom. So I love Loom because it's free and because of everything that I can easily do with this tool. The other tool that I really am planning to take back to my classroom is Clipomatic. Now, I tried to incorporate as many of the free technology tools that I could, but not all of the ones that I'm going to be highlighting today are free. But the only reason why I'm bringing them is because they are worth it because of the potential they have. Um, I'm not getting any commissions from anything at all that I am presenting to you today by clicking on my link. I'm not making any money. So I'm, I'm seriously just sharing it with you because of the positive engagement I was and feedback I got from my parents, my principal, and my students, most importantly, through using these types of um, tools. So here's my friend Angela, and you can click the video to see, but in the picture you can see that she is making a video in Spanish about her favorite board game. And then she posted it on Google Classroom because that's the platform we use at Chatham County. And she invited her students to respond to it. Angela teaches Spanish one, and she invited her students to uh, tell her what is it that they like to uh, play or if they have any games at home. And here are her students' responses. Isn't it beautiful? It's interpersonal communication at its best because it's, it's very authentic. Here is an example of me, not my best look, but I posted it to my um, teacher social media account and um, I posted the video there and my students respond. I was asking, are you exercising at home? And one of my students responded, yeah, exercising with languages. So I love that response. They really get into it. It's very personal. And that's why I love about Clipmatic. So I wanna give a shout out to my friend, Annabelle Williams from La Maestra Loca. I learned this too, about this tool from her. And actually, if you click on this link on the top, it will take you to her blog where she explains to you step by step how to use Clipomatic in the classroom. I do have to say that Clipomatic costs $5, but it's a one time fee and it's very much worth it. And I also have to say that it only allows you to create a 60 second clip. But the beauty of it is that it is available in 40 languages. So my French teachers, my German teachers, my Chinese teachers, you guys can use it too. What can you do with this app? Well, you can post your question on uh, your learning management system like Angela did. Uh, you can make it mandatory as attendance for them to respond to it, kind of like the approach that um, my friend Claudia used at the beginning of the presentation. And you can post it to your teacher social media daily if your students follow you there and they can respond there. Or you can upload the video to Flipgrid and have the students respond with a video if that's what you would like. There are so many ways you can go about it. And what's beautiful is that when you go back to the classroom, if you're doing a story or if you're doing a theme, you can continue to create these videos and give the students the captions so that make it more comprehensible for them and boost that engagement. So that's why I'm sharing Clipomatic with you today. The next tool that is super powerful, it's going to be Go Formative. Now, Go Formative also costs money. Um, but I have to tell to you about it because for me, it was a game changer. I love Go Formative because you can upload documents into it, documents that you already own, worksheets, task sheets, and you can set it so that the student can answer it and then it grades it for you. Of course, if it's something like an essay or like a speaking um, 
option, it's not gonna grade it for you. But other than that, it will grade it for you. So when you add content, you can add audio, your audio, you can embed links, you can uh, integrate images, you can do text blocks, videos, whiteboard, you can upload your own content, like I say, and how can the students respond? Well, they have all of these options. So Go Formative is super versatile because it generates a lot of powerful data for you. It tells you which students completed, how well they did, and then the beauty of it for world languages is that if a student copied and pasted an answer, it will tell you that the student copied and pasted the answer. And if you would like to learn more about that feature, you can click on this link right here. And if you wanna sign up an account with GoFormative, you can click right here. Now GoFormative does cost $13.50 per month, but your school can purchase it for you. Um, I talked to my principal about it and he said that you know he was gonna get a quote from them. So it's all about how you sell it to your principal. You tell your principal, oh my God, you gotta check out this entire data that I have the potential to see with GoFormative. Data speaks volumes. So that's definitely a selling point for me uh, and for my administration. So what's something else that you can do with GoFormative that's so amazing is that you can collaborate with teachers across the United States. You just have to connect with them. You can learn more about GoFormative and how to use it because you will. Have, there's a small learning curve, but it's not that bad. You can learn it through um, the GoFormative community forum and they have some videos. But if you really wanna learn how you can adapt it as a world language educator, my friend um, Christina, I'm sorry, not my friend Christina, my friend Lisa and my friend Claudia have created an amazing course uh, that talks all about GoFormative for world language teachers. And that's how I learned to use it. Um, and it's just amazing. So let's review. We explore ideas to create and sustain strong relationships with students. So we know that the strategic student and parent surveys are a gold mine of information that will allow us to understand if our students are missing any mass low needs and intervene and try to create a, um, a way to meet those needs through the school. We can also create emotional check-ins as our attendance. Now, we examine a variety of online tools for successful online learning that address different stages of a lesson. So now we know that less is more and that it's important to leverage the power of Loom and that we can use Clipomatic to engage students in a more personal and informal level, which is definitely their language. And finally, review and select strategies to motivate students to succeed. Still, again, less is more. And then I also share with you how Go Formative is a game changer and you have to do what is best for you and your students and your situation. And then I want you to remember that you are not alone. So with all of that being said, are you ready for what's to come? I don't know 100% what's to come for me, but I know that we can experience calmness. If we choose the right tools, and we select things strategically, we can experience calmness. Regardless of whether we have to do another semester online or we're going to be back in a building, being able to show and foster all the relationships we have with our students. Thank you so much for joining me and for staying until the end of this presentation. It means a lot to me. I will be more than happy to provide more information about any of the topics I presented. My name, again, is Berta Delgadillo. I'm also known as Profesora Delgadillo. And you can uh, email me. You can connect with me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. You can visit my blog for more ideas. And if you want to join my conversation, you can join my Facebook group, Transformation Through Acquisition Driven Instruction. And I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.